uh, with a project they've been working on, Blob Chat. So thank you very much. Take it away. Oh, 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 H, W, 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 G 
Um, taking questions? Any takers for questions? Um. I haven't fully formulated the question, but it had something to do with, okay, it had something to do with um, emotions and vulnerability and texting, and it strikes me that with some people it's easy to be emotional in a text and with other people not so much and somehow you pulled emotion into this and named some feelings and then I noticed it kind of bounced away from that and I'm just wondering, well I'm wondering how you feel right now. <laughs> and I'm, um, well, and I'm just wondering, um, I'm wondering how to amp up feeling state, and I guess you did it with music. The project's called Blob Chat, and it's all about how you kind of translate, how you can translate text-based communication into different forms that, you know, we've used spatial audio or just space in general. Um, and uh, we've also tried like machine learning and installation, and this is our first time trying it as a performance. and. A lot of it has to do with the fact that we communicate through text really often and trying to figure out, you know, how can we sort of embody things like gesture and music and sort of make other kinds of meaning that can happen in face-to-face -face communication or even things that can happen like beyond what we can imagine in face-to-face -face communication. For me, one of the things I'm really fascinated with is like I grew up texting in chat rooms and I always felt like that was a more direct way to communicate with people a lot of the time. Like, I don't know, actually we were gonna tell this story, but I was thinking about this time that I was on the phone with my brother and we had this like really big fight and then we totally resolved it within 10 seconds by texting each other instead of talking on the phone. And I was like, there's something weird about this. Like there's things that text-based communication affords. There's things that like machine learning affords. There's things that you know, musical kind of conversation affords and we're trying to just explore kind of the boundaries of those by embodying some of those different things. Hi, uh, um, my question is about the prior works just I, uh, um, prior work did you build off, but I know how I think is she's from Magenta, right? Uh, 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 about yeah. the works about Bach. And I'm also aware of there's another website called Type of Tone by Jonah Brendel. Yeah, and he there's also a work called um, Paratap about typing to create music and visual. I think that might have some relevant to your works, works like this one, and I'm also wondering what it's the whole context um, that bring you here to this work. Like, there's is there under another like prior work about this text to music or other other media to music idea? I mean, what's the text around these works? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love John O'Brandel's work. Um, I think that uh, what I'm really interested in is sort of the real-time 
aspect of text-based communication and, and translating that emotion and kind of the, also the real-time aspect of music, which really only exists in time. I've racked my brain about how music can exist out of time and it seems like text can exist out of time uh, and images exist out of time, but music never exists out of time. Um, <laughs> they don't. We experience them in time. Yeah. But they kind of do exist like, out of time. Remember that crazy book we were reading? Everything was about like spatio-temporal <laughs> phenomenology or whatever, and it was all talking about like no matter what, we're experiencing everything in time, even if it feels like we're not. But there is something like fundamentally different about the way that we experience music in time, and that's like it's very strange because there's our personal time and there's the time of the music, and it's kind of like a moment of those two things happening together. Yeah, and this project sort of tries to bring those two pieces together and sees where the, the marriage of time and text and music and sound and language and meaning. I'm trying to make something out of it. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think we have the time. Yeah. <laughs> So I got another question that's kind yeah. of driving at the emotional question of before. Um, I feel like text-based communication, I do find it easier to be emotionally like vulnerable in it sometimes. It's kind of conditional, but sometimes. But it, it also, it lacks all gesture and it lacks all facial expression, everything that normally allows us to com communicate our emotions. And maybe in some ways that allows the, you to be more vulnerable because you don't have to actually have to look at someone. But then I, I was seeing this, and it seems like music can convey a lot of emotion, but only. I, but it, I don't know if you have that kind of level of control over like how your music sounds in this. Did you consider doing that? Kind of like, and, and how do you feel that if, it, if, yeah, what do you think about when text takes away the the physical presence of emotion? If that's something that's good or or helpful or what? I mean, it can be useful many times. Yeah, I totally agree with the, yeah, part of it is sort of bringing the, the, the stutter of the typos and the stutter of language and speaking into sort of a text form. Um, one of the goals is to kind of translate musical meaning or meaning into musical meaning. Uh, currently, it's just an arbitrary mapping and I'm not entirely convinced there's like a less arbitrary mapping um, but I would like to try and maybe find one, find if such a thing exists. You should explain what was going on. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's the Z. Uh, no, it's, I basically took one neural net which outputs an encoded Z dimension that happens to be the same size as another neural net that the Magenta team made that takes that same size Z. And the, the first one is a text to meaning model, and the second one is a Z space decoder, which is decodes into music, like multi-part music. And that's what drives all of the chords, and that's what drives kind of this back, uh, maybe it's all broken, but it kind of drives the, the backing track. Um, it never really escapes the mapping that I put into it, right? I'm sort of just, I'm navigating this like super high dimensional space, but in a meaningful way, but it's still totally like random and arbitrary. Uh, like there is meaning encoded. Relationships are all there, but yet because I have no compass and no orientation to these maps, there's nothing that sticks them together. I'm just sort of meandering. Thank you. I think that was a good explanation. Um, I think to answer the question about emotion, I, I feel like a lot of what we're trying to do with this project is not necessarily, first of all, say something is like a, like a better or worse way of communicating, but sort of emphasize how much the systems through which we're communicating change the way that you communicate with each other. I mean, like classic McLuhan quote, we also had that in our list of quotes that we didn't actually end up typing out, but um, I feel like for us, a lot of the time, systems are designed optimizing for like efficiency. So how do you get the most efficient, uh, the most efficient way to transmit your message? And I feel like art is really antithetical to that, right? It's about thinking about what is the way that a message can be conveyed that says things that are not super efficient, that convey this kind of like otherworldliness um, that's harder to talk about. And so 
for us, like making a system that's like the best chat room ever, this is like the opposite of that. Like by the end, you know, you can't we can't really read what each other are saying <laughs> almost at all. And I feel like obviously this isn't a great way to like write an email, but <laughs> But if you need to get in touch, you can find me at blob.chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was wonderful.